Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be talking about the compounds that make up deodorant and how those compounds bond together. I'll also be talking about what an antiperspirant is. So here we have deodorant and here we have an antiperspirant. And so this video is part of a two video series and in this video as I just said I'll be talking about deodorants and also what an antiperspirant is but I'll be talking about more of what compounds make deodorant and how those compounds bond together. But in the second video, I'll be talking about what compounds make antiperspirants and how those compounds bond together. So first of all, deodorants and antiperspirants both help fight body odour, but they both fight it in different ways. The first deodorant, which killed odour-producing bacteria, had been made in 1888, while the first antiperspirant, which helped prevent both sweat production and bacterial growth, was made in 1903. And so the main difference between deodorants and antiperspirants is the manner or way in which they reduce body odour. So first let's talk about deodorants. So deodorants, as I said before, help reduce body odour. But they do this by targeting the bacteria under your arms that produce various bad smelling compounds. And so some deodorants use antibacterial compounds such as triclosan. And so I'll be talking about triclosan next. So this is the chemical structure of triclosan. And so triclosan was first used in 1964 in hospitals because of health care. And it is also used as an antiseptic and it's also found in consumer products such as cosmetics, household cleaning products, plastic materials, toys and also paints. And so the chemical formula for triclosan is C12H7Cl3O2. And so the elements that appear in triclosan are carbon, hydrogen, chlorine and oxygen. The black is the carbon, the white is the hydrogen, the red is the oxygen and the metallic colour grey or silver is the chlorine. And so chlorine is a new element that we have not looked at before. So chlorine was discovered in 1774 by Carl Wilhelm Scheele who mistakenly thought it contained oxygen. And so chlorine is in group 7, meaning, as I've talked about in the previous videos, it only needs one more electron to have a full valence shell, which means I only had one bond, just like hydrogen. So let's take this chlorine atom, for example. So this chlorine atom only had one bond to this carbon atom. And same with this chlorine atom, it only has one bond to this carbon atom. And so even though I just said it's like hydrogen, Chlorine is more like fluorine, as fluorine is in the same group, group 7. So, as I've said before, carbon has four bonds, as I said in a previous video, because it has one bond to this carbon atom, one bond to this hydrogen atom, and it had a double bond here to this carbon atom. And so, this hydrogen atom, as I explained, only has one bond, just like the chlorine. An oxygen atom has two bonds. So this oxygen atom has one bond to a hydrogen atom and one bond to a carbon atom. Uh, whether this oxygen atom had one bond to a carbon atom and another bond to a carbon atom. And so once again we see carbon rings. And I've talked about this in a previous video. And so carbon rings are usually found in organic chemistry or biology. And so when you see carbon rings it shows it has a tough structure. And because these carbon rings help the other carbon atoms bond together because it has double bonds to these carbon atoms and single bonds to other carbon atoms so it's in rings and as I said before in another video you usually see this structure of carbon atoms in carbon fibre as carbon fibre is a very tough material and so the next compound is deodorant is cyclomethicones both deodorants and antiperspirants often use cyclomethicones and so cyclomethicones are fast drying silicon compounds as solvents. And so this is the chemical structure of it. And the chemical formula of it is C10H30O5SI5. And so the C, the carbon, once again the black atom, and so the black ball is carbon. And next we have hydrogen, and the hydrogen is the white semispheres. And in this case, every single hydrogen atom is bonded to a carbon atom, and every single carbon atom has three hydrogen atom bonds and one bond to a silicon atom. Let's take this carbon atom, for example, had 
one, two, three hydrogen bonds and one bond to the silicon atom. And let's take this carbon atom, for example, as one, two, three bonds to a hydrogen atom and one bond to a silicon atom. And so if we come across carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, we have never come across silicon until now. And so silicon was discovered by Jones Jakob Bertullius, a Swedish chemist, in 1824. And so silicon is in group 4, meaning it needs 4 bonds to have a full valence shell. So, let's look at it. So this silicon atom has 1 bond to a carbon atom, 1 bond to another carbon atom, and 2 bonds to 2 different oxygen atoms, here. And so every single, as I just be said before, every single carbon atom has three bonds to a hydrogen atom, one bond to a silicon atom, and every single silicon atom has two bonds to two different hydrogen atoms and two bonds to two different carbon atoms. And every oxygen atom has two bonds between two different silicon atoms. And so those are all the compounds that make up deodorant. In the next video, I'll be talking about what compounds make up antiperspirants and how those compounds bond together.